Hey everybody, Josh RV here with Bishes. Uh, 4,590 pounds to 20 BHS IPEX. Had a lot of requests to look at this one, so I hope you enjoy. I'm doing the best I can to try to fulfill those requests, although my list keeps getting longer instead of shorter. So IPEX is really kind of striking an interesting note for me. Um, they, they touch little rugged notes, they touch little creature comfort notes, and I'm go they're almost kind of defining their own class of sort of rugged luxury. I'm going to call it a luxury coach. Like, it, it has things like the lifted tire package and a 190 watt roof solar panel package, which is cool. It has a couple little really nice uh, interior living touches as well, like some awesome headboard side pockets for whether it's phone chargers, CPAP users, whatever. But, you know, it never fully commits to either side of things. It still remembers it's a camper. Um, it's not a full-on glamper. It, it falls between, like if you say camper, RV, glamper. Like it, I don't know. It doesn't really fall it into a bucket. Um, so this is uh, when an, a uh, not an Apex, when an Ibex starts with a, uh, uh, a model number 20, that means it's an eight foot wide tandem axle, whereas the 19 Ibexes are, um, it's like a seven foot four body single axle. So just to kind of give you a reference, but we've got um, Asdell, we've got an enclosed uh, heated belly, we've got tank heaters. There's a bunch of really interesting things they do on this. Um, and you know, it's totally garbless, even in the slide, they nailed it. But they also totally dropped the ball in a couple areas like the kitchen. I'll go ahead and volunteer one. Not a freaking drawer in the kitchen. Why? Why, Ibex? You know, it's such an easy thing to fix. One drawer, one drawer. Come on, guys. But that's the kind of stuff I want to show for you. I want to give you the up and the down as we go so that you can have a fair assessment of this thing before you fork over your hard-earned money, you know? Now, one of the more interesting things in here, to me anyway, is not my face, but what's above my balding hairline. A lot of air. A lot of air space in this one. Get you a lot of head space in here. What I mean, um... These are taller inside. So this is built with a, a lot of the same shell and kind of stuff as a uh, like a Surveyor LE series. They're, they're very close cousins effectively within the Forest River family. A lot of the same management, a lot of the same engineering structure, a lot of the same outfitting. This one just kind of takes the LE series and kicks it up a notch of that with that, that luxury factor that we're going to talk about a little bit as we go. Whereas the LEs tend to be a little bit more plain Jane by comparison. But I got a quick question for you. Your control panel's way up high here, which in a bunkhouse, keeping it away from little kids, to me makes a lot of sense. But I thought about it. I'm tall. My wife would have trouble reaching that up there. I think she could still manage. But what about folks with limited mobility disabilities? That would be hard to reach. But is this a camper that really caters to that clientele? Is it not? I don't know. I'm, I, I'm looking for your input. Is that good? Is that bad? What do you think? So, other than that, kicking things off here from the slide, looking toward the door side of the RV. Very quickly reveals, I like the, the big kitchen window. I like the bedside window. I personally dislike the lack of window in the entry door. That being said, sitting here between the front window and those two door side windows, it's not bad. I think you can still see enough, you know, that if you need to kind of tilt your head left or right to look around, you can make it work. It's not too terrible, you know. Now, um, compared to that um, Surveyor LE series that I mentioned, or the, the smaller Ibexes, this does have central air, and that's a 15,000 BTU air unit on these, so no need to upgrade. They've already done that for you. The entertainment center in this is kind of an afterthought, but I think this camper is more about getting your family there and trying to spend time outside getting rough and dirty. Um, if you're going to be indoors though, it gives you enough of an entertainment center to make it through. And there's, um, a big part of me that sort of wonders, should this be a Murphy bed or should it be offered? And there's advantages both ways. The, uh, the, the 240 surveyor will give you that Murphy bed. I've got a link on that. I'll, I'll try to remember to leave a link on that in the video description. If you're curious and if I forget, drop me a note and let me know and I'll dig it up. So what we're looking at here though is a fixed full-time 60 by 80 queen so you don't have to worry about murphy nothing and you can swap that out for your mattress of choice because let's let's face it um the factory mattresses are uh they're approved by chiropractors just because they helped my chiropractor uh buy his new yacht as it were <laughs> um take a look at this though 
I love the, the location of those USB plugs is great because if you look at the side stands, you say, wait a minute, no USB plugs. No, no, they give you USB plugs. They put the household outlets down low for like lights and fans. They put the USB plugs next to you where you can actually, you know, uh, charge phones and whatnot. What I don't know, did they put outlets back here? They did not. That's why I like to investigate this stuff. I think that would have been really, really CPAP friendly myself. But then again, I don't know. Does it still work? Once again, you tell me. Let's take a look at bed storage. Then again, I didn't think about it. Flipping the bed up in the way kind of, you know, blocks our view of things. This is smart to me. A lot of RVs give us hanging closet space. Maybe they'll give us a cabinet above the bed or not. This one doesn't, actually. I think that's a very solid cat. And I really appreciate that they didn't just leave that middle open. So many manufacturers will just leave a middle section open and like partition off left and right. Those open middle chunks are good for nothing. They're good for absolutely nothing unless you get there and then you have to get some like baskets to put up. But you gotta take the storage up and down and up and down and it's stupid. You don't have to do that here. By the way, that's not daylight shining in. There is an accent backlight. And it does have a nice storage area under the bed. It also only has one strut, which on its own is not strong enough to lift the bed. Uh, with respect, Ibex, fix that. Either give us no struts or two struts. This this half and half, this one thing, it it just it it doesn't it doesn't work. It just doesn't work for me. Now, like I said, we are completely carpetless. We're ventless flooring. This is easy cleaning. Um, the uh, even you know here in the step up slide also carpetless. And notice how the the, the linoleum is actually the very first thing that goes down before um, like all of the flooring. Also. Credit to them, given the good with the bad, with the, the radius edges around everything so you don't have a sharp corner ripping up your legs. Uh, folks, I've climbed in and out of so many dinettes over the years, and I can't tell you how many times I have had a leg gashed open or scratched nastily because of something like that. And even bravely bold Sir Robin, who rode forth from Camelot, would be afraid of something like that. Um, Dinette can fold down into a sleeper, of course. We already saw the open storage down below there. But take note of the bunk space. Notice how there were two separate curtains going on over there? You have separate private uh, upper and lower beds. You can always pull those curtains shut if you want it to kind of feel a little more enclosed off. Or, just like you've done here, you can leave them wide open and it makes the camper feel so, so big. Um, what's funny is this is a floor plan that is like a puffed up version of a single axle camper, but you're getting the, the better ride handling and towing safety of tandem axles along with some extra living space. Now, upper and lower bunks both get their own light, both get their own breeze window, both get their own set of USB plugs, and you've got a ladder you can actually climb. And those wooden dowel rod styles, yeah, can a kid get up and down, I'm sure. They're, they're not barefoot friendly though. You know what is barefoot friendly? The central vacuum's electric dust pan, as it were. Because you can turn it on with bare feet, or shoe, or flip flop, doesn't matter, doesn't matter at all. But you've got the central vacuum unit on the right. It doesn't come with the pool cleaner hose or anything like that that's the sound you have to make when you describe it i'm sorry i don't make the rules but you can just kick that little thing on here with your foot now it's not going to do anything right now because i'm not t hooked up to 110 power if you're hooked up to park power have a generator that will go and you can just sweep everything in there so it doesn't come with a hose because it doesn't need one this is carpetless you just sweep everything in there and there you go she's done like uh you know Kirby Superstar from Smash Brothers or what have you. And I'm kind of digging this sort of gray taupe kind of decor here. It reads a little bit lighter without reading farmhouse. And at the same time in a bunkhouse, if the kids got something on their fingers and they touch everything, it doesn't show as obviously, although I would still want to clean it off. But this kitchen, you know, I want to love it. I do. It's so close for a, for a camper this size. They came so close but not one single drawer. Can, you know, could I go get a utensil organizer? Could I do something like that? Yes, it just, one drawer, you know? It just feels like they could have come up with something for one drawer. Um, and uh, down here, convection microwave below the stovetop. Um, Coachman Apex sometimes does some very similar things to that, though they don't typically do convection. Now, 
you know, so I like to, so I'm griping about the, the, the drawers, right? So the question is, okay, fine, smart guy, where would you put them? I would, I would want two drawers right there. I, I would put a small, maybe little waste basket or something, I don't know, down there. But make that to, you know what, leave it open, I don't care. But give me two drawers right there on, on pull-out glides, I would be happy. And in case you're curious, inside here we have the black box where you can store the nuclear launch codes, Yavor. They come with it comes with its own strong box, apparently. Um, you know, just in case you're gonna go on the hunt for the Red October or something. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, by the way, what you're looking at there? 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Got to double check my notes. I'll try to remember to leave a note on screen. I do believe you can get these outfitted with a two-way fridge if you are looking for more boondock power friendliness. But where they've had, arguably, a couple little slip-ups here and there. To be fair, for every little nitpick I've had, they've also had 10 or 12 really kind of outstanding qualities. Like, I like the sealed edge press membrane counters. I love all that radius work. The double carpetless makes sense. A lot of manufacturers biff it on that. Oh, look, we're carpetless down here. Then they throw a rug in there. And you notice how they didn't do that here. Apparently, I feel a certain way about that. I didn't realize. Um, also, this is something you can't really see. You have to feel it in person. And I always recommend, come to one of our places and try stuff on for size. This tabletop is insano lightweight. My concern with that is if you're going to try to have a bigger person sleep on that, I don't know that it's really going to hold them very well. That being said, though, with a couple bunks over here, I don't know that you're going to need to sleep somebody on the dinette, but I want you to be aware of that. A, a workaround maybe, by the way, to come up with some sort of like under pedestal support system. Speaking of pedestals, I think this is one time this is pedestal table is actually the right decision here, or at least not the worst because the table can't fall off the step-up slide. My personal favorite, actually, would be one of those old traditional tabletops where it clips into the wall, and then you have a single drop leg over here. That I really like because it's lightweight, and then it becomes a total no knee knocker. So this is okay. That'd be my little nerd preferred method, though. Digital thermostat, huh? Still a lot of guys running analog and stuff like this. Um, but what I was saying is, for every little nitpick I've had, there's stuff that they've done really well, and. Buddy, they crush this bathroom. There's amazing space around that toilet. If you are a bigger, fluffier person, you've got awesome room. A sink in the bathroom so you don't have to wash your bathroom hands in the kitchen. Um, we've also got a bigger vent fan up here to really exhaust serious, serious airflow. And where that's handy is if you are boondocking and not running the air, that slotted door right there can allow it to pull fresh air in from the windows and exhaust the hot air that we're breathing and creating by existing every single day out the top of the RV where the hot air wants to go anyway. And remember when I talked about the taller ceiling in this? Buddy, it comes back to pay us dividends in the shower space. It is extremely nice in there. Over here, we've got the shower miser system. When you flip the little latch, uh, what's happening here is it recycles your, your water back into your fresh tank. Um, so that you're not wasting it. And, you know, if you're boondocking, you're not wasting your fresh water capacity and pouring it into the gray tank. That blue thing will turn white when it gets warm. But this is where they really cranked it up to 11. This has floor to ceiling bathroom storage space in here. Frankly, this is more and better than a lot of fifth wheels. You notice how there's plenty of shelving at equidistant marks across from it. To me, that right there is how uh oh i'm hooked on something oh god my pants are, help help why you gotta do me on that like camera why you gotta do that why you gotta grab my belt loop leave me alone leave me alone nobody likes you but at least it locks but if what you're looking for is a travel stop family friendly functional floor plan you need look no further than this thing. With the slide fully retracted here, you can easily walk through it. Everything. This is 100% accessible to every single bit of storage, sleeping, bathroom, everything without even touching the slide. It's awesome in this regard. Now, she is super windy today, so hopefully that's not causing any problems. And I want to begin out here with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, the last time I covered an Ibex, I, I really kind of stumbled over myself. I was still kind of jet lagged, I wasn't caffeinated, and I really struggled with something. 
Um, it's kind of what I mentioned earlier. So this is a 20 BHS. If an Ibex starts with a model number of 20, then it's a tandem axle eight foot wide, just like we're looking at today. If it starts with a 19, it's a seven foot four body with a, uh, a single axle. So that's kind of to help you understand the family, but the general construction and features otherwise are going to pretty much effectively be the same. Uh, you got the nice tinted windows. I like the color palette. I'd be kind of curious to know what other people think about that. I like that white, sort of light gray, that electric blue coming off the mountains, you know. Magnet holdbacks on the baggage doors. And notice, this is a nice big full pass-through, equal size baggage doors on both sides. So somebody like me can climb through here. Um, let's do it! Woo! Woo! That was a workout. Anyway, um, would, would you believe I actually climbed through there? I mean, I didn't, but would you believe it? Never mind. Up top here, we got that 1,000 watt inverter, helping uh, if you are boondocking a little bit. This is made, again, that Ruxury series. It's primarily something I think by default you'd use in parks the most. It has some off-grid functionality it's not a full-on like you know 9,000 watt off-grid solar package brother or something like that it's got some light off-grid kind of function you know those kind of things um double uh 20 pound propane tanks up front so you know it's easy to swap out on a sunday at a gas station in case you run yourself out of propane for whatever reason um back here under the power awning of course with led lighting past the entry door that lacks a, a window for whatever reason um, why are so many manufacturers doing that? And because it, it's not just like one or two did it. It's like a ton of them said, eh, forget it, no windows. Um, we've got the griddle station out here. Now this does not have a true camp kitchen because you've got, you know, a bathroom over here. There's nowhere, like, there's not under bunks where they could stuff some of that stuff. But they did include for us a handy little sprayer hose right here. So you can kind of do a little campsite cleanup, maybe play with the kids a little bit. For the griddle, of course, we got the propane cooker hooker down below. We've got LED tail and marker lights. And, uh, you know, which is uh, pretty common nowadays, but I don't want to say completely standard. I've noticed a couple different tires on some of the Ibexes. I'm like, this is riding on Goodyear Wranglers. I've seen some of the others on West Lakes. I don't know if that's the difference between the 20 series and the 19 series, or if it's a supply related issue. Issue. So if that's a really important critical factor for you, I want to point that out so that when you're shopping, you know maybe what questions to ask. And I don't want you to just draw presumptions based off of what you've seen on this video. A uh, black tank flush over there, not too far from the outside shower. I always think for the, at a glance, I'm always like, oh no, these are like crooked. But no, it's, it's on an angle on purpose to try to look, I don't know, cool. Now this RV is not parked on level ground, but at the same time, that means that we can get under here nice and easy, and that is doing what I call turning chicken poop into chicken soup, taking a weird thing and making it a positive. <laughs> so the underbelly there, um, enclosed. It does have 12 volt tank heater pads as well. So this is going to be a very solid extended season camper. It could handle some below freezing temps. If it's going to be insane hard Arctic freezing, you're gonna wanna get it winterized. But as long as you're willing to chug the furnace, Frankly, you'll be able to maintain cabin temperature pretty well in almost any RV. And I know you can't exactly see the wind whipping through my hair, uh, but just suffice to say it's windy enough. I recently saw a house fall on a building, a girl stole her shoes, and then the Lollipop Guild and the Lullaby League came out and sang a song. She's a windy one. Speaking of Wendy, remind me to uh, tell you the story about my Uncle Gary after the Chili Con Carne Festival. Woo! Up front here, 190 watt uh, Go Power roof solar package on here, which actually, as I'm doing these videos, provided I turn the refrigerator off, I will actually net positive energy and they will replenish my battery pack instead of deplete it, which is uh, kind of cool. Working our way around here, we've got ourselves a 15,000 BTU air conditioner standard. I would prefer a white shroud there, but that size air on this size camper, I don't think it's gonna make a hill of beans a difference. You may also notice those two tracks back there. This is prepped and ready for a roof cargo rack system rated for about 500 pounds. So if you do have something like a kayak or a cargo pod or Aunt Edna, well, you can strap them down. So, uh, some other news here. Yes, that's a 10 amp charge controller right now. They are going to be changing to a 30 amp controller. I don't know when, I don't have a date for you. I don't know if 
when you should hold off or how long or something like that. I'm just trying to give you information here. And understand, giving you insights like that is the kind of thing that may stall somebody from purchasing at our facility. I hope you appreciate that we take the time and effort to tell you things like that. The goal here is to make you the most educated consumer you possibly can be. And if you appreciate that, hit subscribe if you're already with us, like the video, and leave me a couple comments. Let me know one or two things you like, one or two things you don't. I've done the same. I've done more than one or two though. Well, when you're ready, we're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Happy camping, everyone.